So I've just brought Trojan into the yards, this is my very first session with him and we know very little about him. So he was with his old owner for four years running as a stallion with a herd of mares and foals and from, as far as we are concerned he's totally untouched and unhandled. Very quickly I've been able to get a little bit of an idea of him in terms of uh, the body language he's presenting us. And when we're working with wild horses, often they have layers to them um, in terms of uh, the fear responses that they're presenting. And you have to work from those outer layers in and be very aware that you're only moving that one step at a time. And if you push too far in, you get quite a big um, fight, flight and freeze response. This guy here, based off his body language, although he's uneasy about um, you know, being in the surroundings, he's actually very open in his body language and he doesn't appear to have that many layers. So you can tell just by looking at him, he's very brave, he's able to walk up to what he's afraid of, he uh, is very outward in terms of the fact that he's always looking around and surveying everything. If you compare that to Portos, my other stallion, uh, Portos is very inward and often freezes and doesn't and, and sort of avoids what, what the issue is. So what I'm going to do here Good. I'm going to put pressure on him until, good boy, he starts to bring an ear, an eye, or ideally his whole body towards me. So I'm just going to follow him here, keep the pressure. He's just put an ear on me, and so I'm going to hop back. So he's going to quickly learn, good job, that when he faces me, especially with two eyes, I'm going to draw out of his space. So there you've got your typical stallion marking his stud pile and that can be sometimes a little bit of a, um, a fight response so he's trying to mark his territory. Good, there we go, I hop back, nice. And there he drew towards me quite a wee away. So here, a little bit stressed. So I'm not pushing in closer to him, I'm kind of just mirroring that layer until I hit that state of tension and then I allow him uh, time to then start to answer. So here I'm going to come around, he put an ear on me, I'm going to release. Good, put two eyes on me, I'm going to release. So my goal is that I can start to draw him in. So here, pressure, I'm not going to get closer, I've already hit tension, but I'm just going to follow him. Follow, nice. Good, I really like that answer because he well, one, he's moved towards me, but two, he's stood his ground and, and not turned away from me. So what he's going to quickly learn is that that is his safety stop. If he needs me to get back, he's just going to come into my space without obviously trying to dominate me or um, use a fight instinct. So now he's left. I'm just going to follow after him. He's got an air on me. I know he's watching me and I'm going to hop back there. I'm going to hop back there. And so I'm trying to hop back as his body language begins to change towards me. So he doesn't actually necessarily have to step towards me. The moment I get that sense that his ear and his eye are softening on me and his body's starting to follow, I'll draw back. I don't want to wait until he's come into my space because it's too late. I don't quite get that nice tidy transition. So here, 
good. I actually like that he put that ear back on me and was considering coming around. So here I'm just going to ghost him. I might click to him. Good. Nice. Good. And that, you can see my hands are up when I'm asking him in. As he comes in, they slowly drop and my energy goes very cold. So when I'm training my horses, I don't want to have a high intention or energy unless I'm asking them a question or else they either become desensitized to my question or they become hyper reactive, depending on the type of horse they are. I like this because he's got two eyes on, well, he's got one eye on me, but he's, his body language is starting to come towards me. And what I'm going to do here, good, is I'm going to start to come around him with the ultimate goal that as he starts to learn to draw in, I can then start to move his hips across. Good boy. So for example, I would try to push the hind quarter over here, give a little bit of space to his eye. Good, there we go, he almost. Good. And then as I get further body control, I can start to bring the, uh, the forehand over with this hand, push the hind quarters over with this hand, and then hopefully start to get the turn on the forehands and, and teach him how to uh, draw in properly. So here, good boy. I put the pressure on the hip with this hand. Good job. And I'm just going to stay very cold. My energy is very low. Even though he's not looking at me. There we go. I'm very happy with that answer because he's very square. He's had a nice look of the lips. So you can see even when I'm putting the pressure on it, although he did have a little bit of a moment here when he was pouring the ground, for the most part he's quite relaxed compared to what you would get from a kaimano straight out of the wild. If I was asking these sort of questions to a kaimano out of the wild, they would be moving at speed around the round yard and that I would be making some pretty bad mistakes because they're, they're not ready for it. For him, I can see that although he's weary about what's happening, he's giving me some really good answers. Nice. He, that time he just had the two eyes on me. So he controls me with his eyes. If, and I know when I'm, I'm safe to go in and there's no issue is when he stands there and doesn't try to do that safety stop. So I'm going to put the pressure on the hip here. Good, good, and I want to start bringing that forehand across like that. Good job. There I've lost him. I'm going to put the pressure on the hip. Good. So he's considering in his body language, I can see him considering coming into me. So that's why I'm hopping back. Good. Now I'm going to start asking some harder questions of him. I'm going to see if out in the open, good, good, I can start to get him to turn in. There we go. And start to yield that hind quarters around. So here, this hand's drawing the front end to me. This hand's pushing the hind quarters out. He's thinking about it, so I'm just going to wait there. I'm going to follow him. Good boy. I'm going to let him think about that. So even though he's not drawn into me, um, he's given me such a good answer. Good man. So the, oh, the perfect answer would be that he finishes the move facing me. But obviously that is something I would expect once he knows what he's actually supposed to be doing. So here, move the hindquarters. He actually started to bring his energy across. I'll just swap hind quarters here. So I'm going to push this hind hand across. Good. So the front end started to draw towards me. And I'll just... Good boy. Again, he's got the two eyes on me, so I'll draw back. Good. And he's had a nice look of the lips. So here, see if I can get the hind quarter to yield. I love his front end's just starting to push towards me, so I'm going to draw back as a reward. So here I just swap because he swapped sides. 
Good. And again. So at the moment that front end starts to draw towards me, I'm going to retreat. So I've got to be watching his body very carefully. Good. Good. Nice. And this is a big question, so if and when he does it, there, the front end came across to me. Just a, shuttle, a subtle shift of his energy towards me. Good. So I know he's listening to me because he's got his ear on me. And what he's done is he's just got a little bit stuck. Good man. Well done. So I wouldn't want to put more pressure on him because then I'm going to chase him off. When I good boy. When I'm working in my pressure system, and this is why I love working with wild horses, is my I start at pressure one, and pressure one is the very least amount of pressure. It's just a raise in our intentions or our energy. And ten is the most pressure I can use. Because wild horses are so good at reading people and they're constantly communicating with their body language, quite often they only have to sit around a one, two or a three. In a good boy, in a domesticated horse, I sometimes have to work up to the higher levels of pressure because they're not so good at communicating because they've been shut down a little bit. So for me, what I do is I start with one. If I don't quite get a response and, and that feeling like he's trying to answer the question, I'll go to a two and then a three until I get a positive response. But sometimes I might get to pressure two and I can see he's thinking about it. So I'll just stay at pressure two. So for example, here I'm at pressure two. I'm just going to stay here. Stay here. I want that hind quarter to shift across. Good boy. So I didn't need to go up in pressure when he didn't quite answer me straight away because I knew he was trying to answer the question. And it's super important when we're working with these animals that when you hit that level of pressure where they're trying is that you just stay there until you get a response. If you kept going up and putting more pressure on them, then you're going to put them in such a state of stress that they're not going to be able to think through the issue. And what happens is they start to answer you because they're more scared of the consequence, not because they actually understand what you're asking them to do. So now I'm going to push this hind quarter around. So this hand pulls back to let the forehand come to me. This hand pushes. I don't mind if he swaps. Good job. Well done. Now what I'm going to do is slightly different. I'm just going to see if I can step. So I've hit a layer and you can see that in the tension in his body. I'm going to see if I can work through this layer until good boy. He just starts to lower his energy a little bit. So what I'm doing is I've, I've stepped him into the survival brain so you can see that he's thinking about leaving. I'm just going to buffer here until he starts to bring his energy down and I can tell when he's bringing his energy down because his head will lower. Good. Good. And his eyes will soften. His ears will relax a little bit. At the moment they're flicking back and forth. They're trying to find the threat. His, he's breathing quite heavily and sometimes he wants to leave. So establishing this ability to draw in is really cool because when I lose him, good job, I can just quietly bring him back to me. So here I've had a really nice moment where he's drawn in. I'm just going to wander within this layer and he's already better within this layer. So as soon as he, good, he's just started to slow blink slightly. And then I withdraw or retreat to reward. I'm going to come back into a, oh, that was nice. Good boy. And he's had a nice lick of the lips. 
So he did a, a technically he did a safety stop, um, but he's also drawing in and approaching. So I will always reward a really good effort like that. So here, yield the hind quarter. So push on the hind quarter. Good. He's giving me a slight fight pre-indicator. And you can just see that in just a little bit of tension in his ears as he's approaching towards me. So I need to be aware of that. If I miss that and put more pressure on, it could lead to something more. I, I, don't, I get the feeling like he's going to be fine. But I'm constantly reading what the ears, their eyes and their body is doing at all times so that I can anticipate what they're about to do. I don't want to wait until they've done something wrong and then it's kind of too late. It's like when I'm riding my horses. I don't want to wait until they've bucked me off before I realise something's gone wrong. I want to be able to read in their body language that something is about to happen. So there, he's showing a slight fight indicator. Now these horses are actually have a lot of self-preservation. So if um, I move suddenly, he's very likely of just turning and leaving. He's very unlikely of coming over and actually continuing with that fight response. So just putting my hand out here should be enough to um, sort of get him off me. But I like the fact that, uh, that we're in quite close proximity. So here, good, he's thinking about leaving, good. Good. And I like to have my hand a little bit further out from my body uh, because it is a safety thing. If I'm here and they sniff me in here and then get a fright and do something, they're right in on top of me. Here I've got a little bit of time. Good. So what I'm going to start to work to do is see if he can, good, start to approach my hand. So there I've definitely moved in through those layers and you can see he's quite uneasy and wants to leave. And sometimes I do ask bigger questions of them where there is that little bit of tension. But in this case, when he goes to leave, it's very minor. It's not, he's not running because he's so panicked. He's just unsure about it. So anytime, same thing as when I'm teaching the jaw. Anytime, good boy, he starts to move his body towards me or his energy, I will hop back like that. So he controls me with his eyes. And the biggest issue with horses, if they've got um, fears in them, is if they lose control of the situation, that's when that survival brain goes into full um, mode. And so this safety stop that we do, where the moment, see, watch this, I'll, I'll do, show you a safety stop here. Good, there we go. So the moment he brings his energy towards me, I, I hop back. That enables them to tell me when something's not when they're not comfortable about something and there's a difference between them just drawing into me because they're coming to me and when they're drawing into me because they want to do a safety stop and it all comes down to their body language so if he walks in with his head low his everything soft and relaxed he's just coming in because he's wanting to say hi but if he's coming in with this big um, energy around him his head high his ears out, you know sort of elevated and flicking back and forth and his eyes worried and nostrils heaving then he's trying to do a safety stop so that's why understanding a horse's body language is very important so here I'm just going to put a bit of pressure and I don't have to put very much on because he's so good at listening good I'm going to ask with a little bit more pressure now there we go Good, and I like that because as I went to walk forward, he started to surge very gently towards me. Good job. I'm going to get him to draw back in. If they ignore me, I'll do this with my hand, and then sometimes I'll touch my leg if they ignore that. Nice job. So here, I love that he recovered. He thought about leaving, then he quietly turned back towards me. So that was awesome. I've just hit a layer. 
You can see that by the fact that his energy, his head's lifted, his energy's lifted, his ears are flicking. So I'm just going to wait here till he brings that energy back down. Good. So right now he's studying me. This is not him looking quiet, this is him very much considering what his options are. Good, he's just done a nice deep breath, so I'm going to hop back and reward. And his expression's starting to soften. Good, that was nice. So sometimes as I go to take a step forward, I can see his, his chest muscles starting to, to move towards me like he's preparing to step. So I will reward that effort. I don't want to wait until he's taken a step because I've missed all these other beautiful little tries that he's given me. That. Good. And quite often when I'm working with a wild horse or a horse that um, is a bit worried is that I will come and go quite a bit. I, I don't want to just walk in and have him feel like he's kind of trapped there. So I teach him that I can approach and then I'll always withdraw. Good boy. Good, that was nice. So there he's left. I'm going to see if I can straighten him. That was good. Well done. He's had a little bit of a lick of the lips, so I'm going to give him a break. Sound still good? Cool. Okay. Good. That was so cool. He's just slightly giving me a fight pre-indicator, but what I really liked about that was that he initiated the step forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if I can put myself on the high and all back into the middle. Good. And then draw in. Good. So I don't want him to be out on the rail, but I was just getting a little bit too low below, um, too below him. So I'm going to see if I can get him to draw in. Good. 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 Well done. That was good. Very nice. Give him a little moment to relax. So here. Nice. So you can see him starting to push his nose towards me. So his energy was open all the way into that stage where I put my hand. So I felt I could go all that way. Sometimes I might get to here and his, and his body closes and he stepped into that freeze or um, fear response. And so I have to re uh, read him. He closed slightly. There, he's about to close. Good boy. I'm going to here. Normally I would reward that, but I just wanted to wait till he brought his energy back towards me. Sometimes if I had walked back then, I would have rewarded the fact that he left me. So I just waited until he came back, brought my energy down. That was really cool. So I'm going to see if I can get him to draw, and I tend to go slightly to the side. So I start to walk around, nice. Good. Good. I'm going to wait till he comes back, and then I'm going to draw back to reward him because he thought about leaving. So I know when they're starting to think about leaving, when their head starts to go to the inside, they start, uh, so, sorry, to the outside, they start to lean on the outside leg. Good. And I could be greedy and stay out there, but sometimes that pressure starts to get a little bit heavy on them and they gets a bit too overwhelming. Good. Wait. Good. I'm going to reward on that. I've just hit a layer there. So I'm going to wait till he comes back down. And you can see I'd hit that layer and initiated a little bit of a flight response. Had I have gone further in, he would have left further at speed. 
or in some cases, probably not with this sort of horse he would freeze. So more so with Portos he freezes and just stands stock still. Good, this is a very honest horse, so, which I love because he tells me exactly how he's feeling. Portos is hard to read, not hard to read because I, I, I understand the freeze response, but he doesn't give me a lot. So I'm gonna move the hip, good. And I wanna see if I can get him off the rail. So I'm gonna say draw in, good. Draw in, good. And as his head starts to come back around, I start to give him a bit of space to move in or else if I'm just staying there the whole time, he's got nowhere to come into. Good, draw in. Good job. There, he thought about coming in. Good boy. There, I've had a layer. I'm gonna quietly just hop back a fraction until he relaxes because I pushed too far in and I don't think he would have relaxed on that layer. So I'm gonna wait. He's starting to lower the head. Good, that was nice, give him a break. Good, so he gave me a slight warning that he was a little bit worried. Good, I'm gonna stay here. Wait till he lowers. Good, and his head's starting to drop. Give him a break. Good. There I've hit a layer, and he's thinking about leaving. So ear to the outside, he's come back, I'm gonna reward. Good. Right here until he relaxes down. Good, there we go. And he just starts to get a little bit softer in his eye. So he stayed open all the way to there. Wait on that. Good, he's starting to slow blink. There he's considering leaving, so just wait until he comes down. Good. Good, that was so nice. He went up and then he came straight back down. Thinking about leaving. So I'm gonna wait till his energy drops back down. He's still holding his stress of fraction, there we go. So I can just see he's a bit tight in his face. So he's open until there. There, that was nice. So he just gently brought his muzzle out towards me. There, I've had a moment of tension. Wait till he comes back down. Good, he's had a bit of a lick of the lips. I'm gonna wait till he just relaxes his body language a fraction. 